Beyond Dance to Dream, I like to inspire and motivate adults to dream again. Because as we go through life and take on our different roles and responsibilities, we tend to put our dreams on the back burner. And my goal here at Dawn Dance to Dream is to help you pick those dreams back up and to pursue them again. Now, I, I want you to understand, I started Dawn Dance to Dream because I wanted to relay my message and my heart and my feelings across to whomever would listen. It can be difficult getting your closest family and friends to understand the way that you believe and when you try to express it and share it. So this was like my backdoor way into <laughs> letting everybody know. Now I may have lost some viewers as a result of that because they don't agree. And that's fine. I am definitely a proponent of everyone having their own thoughts, their own process, their own mindset that works for them. Your religion works for you, you keep that. No one's telling you to get rid of that. Whatever it is that works for you, continue to use it. I'm just saying that sprinkle some of this other information on it, this personal development information that I'm providing you and see where your life takes you and how you take off personally. But always remember, we are in control of how we see our environment. I don't care what everyone says it looks like or everyone says it is, we are in control of how we choose to perceive the environment. Hey dreamers, welcome back. And welcome to all the new dreamers who stopped by Dawn Dares to Dream to see what we're all about. Well, we just finished up a very crucial series. We did the how to understand the laws of the universe. So you should definitely check that out. I'll put the link at the end of this video. I also went on vacation to celebrate my cousin's birthday and I went to the Royalton Chic in Cancun, Mexico. You can check that resort out as well. Maybe it's a place you wanna visit. I really enjoyed my stay there. So I'll put the link to that series up as well. And then we're starting a new series today. We are starting, what does success mean to me? What does success look like to me? What do I believe success to be? Because all of us have different uh, ideas and aspects on what we believe success to be. And I just want to tap into this. It's going to be a shorter series, I think. Um, I think it'll be about five or six episodes. So it'll about, be about a two-week series. I just wanted to share my thoughts on what success looks like to me in different areas of my life. I'm going to speak on three examples of, in my personal life of what I consider success to be with respect to my religious goals or the ones that I had in the past and what I thought success was relative to my religion. And then what is success in the natural right here on earth, in this world, in my reality, what success looked like to me. And then we're going to talk about what relationship success looks like for me as well. I just want to dive into this and I want to share some of my personal experiences so that you can understand that we all can have different aspects or different views on success. But the question is, do you want to keep those views or do you want to change those views? Do you want to adjust them? Because remember, we create our own reality. So what you think success is, is going to manifest itself in your life. I just want to ensure that the success that manifests for you is the success that should be manifesting. Maybe we need to adjust course a little bit, but we're going to get into that as we go through this series. And I want you guys to remember, if you've been stopping by Dawn of Days of Dream and you have not subscribed, the subscribe button is right down there, that red rectangular button. Click on that and that way you'll be subscribed to my channel. I could use the support. And for you new dreamers who stopped by today, Click that subscribe button. I'm telling you, you're going to love the information that I give to you today. I looked up the actual definition of success and the Merriam Webster um, definition basically said favorable or desired outcome. See how simple success is? It's a favorable or desired outcome. Because the catch is this, your desired outcome may not be the favorable one, but it's what you desire, is what you saw success to be. So that is what you received. That is what you were happy with, or maybe not. Maybe that's why you are staying tuned in to the series, because you want to get some hints, some tips, some tricks on how to focus on the proper success path for you and your family. Synonym 
to actual success is winner. That's what was listed, winner. There were other things listed there, but I thought winner was a very appropriate one to highlight. So success, remember, is a favorable or desired outcome. And then the synonym to that, so something that's like success is to be a winner. So do you consider yourself to be a winner in your life? What does being a winner look like to you? Are you on the course to being that winner that you know you can be? So I just have a few questions for you, things that I want you to ponder on. What does success look like for you in your life right now? What are those things that you desire to manifest that would tell you that you're successful? Because most of us, we tend to view success based upon what we have or what someone else has, what they do, what they possess. We look at success as something that is outside of ourselves that we have to go and obtain. We have to go and do these certain things to be considered successful. So what are those things that you need to do to be successful in your life on the path that you're on? Have you had the time to really sit down and think about it? Because remember with the law of attraction, and you know, we always talk about the law of attraction with the law of attraction. We have to focus on the things that we want not the things that we don't want. So if you have a path of success that you can see in your mind, what is that path? Then we need to think about, do we believe that we can actually be successful the way that we have thought of success? And then thirdly, what are the action steps that we need to take each day to get to that success, to obtain that success? If you understand what I'm saying. Now, the catch is this, you know, in my intro, I always talk about our reality or what we have. It's all about our own perception is what we perceive in our mind's eye, what we believe is going on. That's what's happening, right? And that's relative to the different um, people in your life. You may be perceived as successful by your children, by your wife, by your husband, by your parents, by your cousins, by your friends, (laughs) by your classmates. You know, you may be perceived as successful. You graduated top of your class. It appears that you have this wonderful job in corporate America. You're making a six-figure income. And that in your friends and family mind is successful. But is that what success means to you? You may want to reach higher, go further. You want to be the VP of the company, not just... um, you know, not just a worker bee because worker bees make pretty good money in corporate America, but we're typically told what to do, but you are a leader and you want to lead and you want to take charge in order to do that. We need to get promoted, right? Yes. So what are those things that are going to get you to that promotion? Because again, your perception is that you are not successful because you have success that you're trying to get to. You get it? I believe that we are already successful. I believe that we already have the things that it is that we desire to be successful. I believe that success is now. Now, you can look at that one of two ways. That you just haven't tuned into the proper frequency to see the success and to live the success from your mind's eye. Everyone else believes that you're living success successfully because that's their reality. But what is yours? Your reality is you're trying to get there. Okay, well, if you're trying to get there and that's your reality, I think you need to tune in to the successes that you already have in your life and be grateful for where you are now because that gratitude is what's going to propel you forward into obtaining the total success package I believe that it is that you're looking for. We've talked about this a little bit. What does it look like to be a winner? What does that look like in your life? It's the same thing that it's just like success. Whatever success is, That's what winning is in your life. But maybe you need to think about it, not from a successful standpoint, but from a standpoint of what do I have to do to get these small wins so that I can get the larger success? Those are those action steps that you need to take. I don't know what those steps are. You know what they are, but whatever they are, you need to write them down. You need to focus on them and you need to figure out each day, how do I do a little bit of something that's going to get me closer to the total goal? But I want to win today. So what am I going to do today that's going to give me a win? What am I going to do tomorrow that's going to give me a win? What am I going to do the entire year that's going to give me incremental wins? Those wins will add up to one big success. I believe that if you focus on one thing that you know can get you to the successful point each day and you accomplish that thing, you will wake up one day and go, oh my God, 
The success is here. Oh my God, I have that raise. Oh, I'm in charge. I'm the VP. Like you will wake up just in astonishment because it will feel like it happened overnight. But success is a process. And it's a process because we are getting our mindset right. When we have the proper mindset and we believe in our hearts, believe in ourselves, believe in our dreams, and we take action on those dreams, they manifest. This one is a doozy. Where did you get your concept of success from? Where did it come from? What, who influenced you in your life? What things happened to you that you said, okay, that's what I believe success to be? What are those things? I need you to sit down, think about it, write them down. Because what's going to happen, you're going to realize that that was success maybe when I was a kid. That was a success when I was in my early 20s. But what I think a success is now in my 50s is completely different. So you want to write down where your idea of success came from the the original point what 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 helped you shape what success would be for you so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you some examples of where i built my success mindset from and it's going to start from a childhood up until now the first place um success was displayed to me was in the church you know i grew up a uh, christian but i was apostolic um holiness right uh that's pentecostal kind of uh sect of christianity so i grew up with this religion and for me success was how well did i was i serving god how well was i listening to his commandments hi how, how well was i servicing the people around me because when you're a christian at least from my viewpoint you're a giver and you want to give you want to share you want to inspire you want to motivate you want to uplift and so that's what i thought that my role was now as far as our religious text was concerned we believed that jesus christ is coming back from heaven he remember he died you know easter he died he came he rose again in three days and then he ascended to heaven to be with his father god right that's what happened but he made a promise that he was going to come back and he was going to take us all to heaven with him. Now, this is the way that I believe growing up as a child. So for me, the ultimate success was living my life well enough according to what Jesus wanted me to do so that when he came back, I was one of the ones that he would take. I was not concerned with any natural success at all. That success was purely spiritual, living the commandments, doing what he wanted, obeying, you know, the, the leaders of the church and servicing others. That is all. And in, in telling others about my life, about Jesus Christ, so that they could be saved also. That was the whole goal, right? So that was success. That was winning. If I could witness to a friend in school and then they could be converted and, and, and want to love on Jesus the way that I do and love God the way that I do or even more. I was winning. I was doing what I was supposed to do. I was successful. Back then, I had no concept of trying to be successful in the natural realm. And that is in the reality, the physical realm that we live in today. I had no concept of that. I purely was just focusing on being raptured, taken to heaven with Jesus Christ. So that's what I thought success was. Now, when you think about that, success in that manner, I'm not concerned at all about this worldly place that I live in. This reality. All I'm concerned about is what is going to happen in my afterlife or is uh, Jesus going to come back and get me while I'm still alive. That's all I care about. I don't care about getting a job. Now, I know I have to work, you know, to pay my bills, but I'm not concerned or labeling success as far as what my career path is. Success was purely being the best Christian that I could be. So we're going to move on to the natural form of success, how I got my concept of that. So we're going to say, I have a best friend. I've known her for over 30 years and her parents are degreed. They have a couple of degrees. They were teachers. I believe done some other things as well in the school system. Um, she has her master's as well and she works in the school system and God, I love her for it because she's helped me out a lot with my son and with aiding me with materials and things of that nature to kind of shore him up in areas that he lacked, um, the tenacity to learn, I'm going to say during the school day. But what I'll tell you is I hadn't really looked at what success was um, until I met her and got to know her family, you know? So as a kid, I didn't really know much, you know, we just played around in school. But as we got older and I would go to her house and visit with her family and I got to learn how they interacted and 
I, you know, I realized that religion didn't appear to be the center focus of their lives. It's not that they didn't believe in God and believe in Jesus. Not that they didn't believe in those things, but it wasn't the center of their focus. So I was like, hmm, they're focused on the here and now and what we can do and how we can live now. My mother rented her entire life. My father rented up until recently, you know, so we didn't own homes. When I met her, her family, they owned homes. You know, her grandmother owned a home. I'm not saying everybody in her home, her family did, but her grandmother did. I believe her aunt did. Like, I remember these things. Um, her parents did. And I was impressed by that. And I was impressed by these educated people. And I said, okay, so this is what success is. Oh, so I kind of shifted. And I began to follow and mimic my best friend and her family's, I'm going to say, um, goals. Because I wasn't even thinking about going to college. That wasn't even a thought. But because she was my friend and college was something that her mother did, her father did, and that she was expected to do, I was like, okay, well, I guess you should go to college. <laughs> so I followed along. And to me, once I received, in my mind, I had to go to school and I had to get a doctorate. I had to go all the way. And to me, that was success. Okay. So I had painted a picture of what success was naturally. Hadn't really still thought about the type of job or the type of income that it would take to live a successful life. But I just said, I'm going to follow this path. I'm going to mimic these people, you know, until I learn better or to do better or until I achieve the success that I think I want and I'm going to stop. But again, this was success that I saw around me. And this was my viewpoint based upon my observations of other people's success. I have no idea how successful they thought they were, but in my mind, they were mighty successful. Relationship success for me is a doozy because I grew up in a split home. I'm quite sure I've talked about this several times. So as a kid, I'm going to tell you, I thought success was being a single mother and taking care of my children to the best of my ability. Now, I know people go, hmm, why not think that you having a husband with you makes would make a successful relationship? It's not what I saw. I was going purely off of what I saw. And we have to remember that as when we're young, we're very impressionable and these impressions can stick to us. Then we grow older, we forget how much we believed in that thought or in that dream of what perfection was or what success was. But the catch is the dream is still there, the thought is still there, the belief is still there. So we still trigger these things to happen in our lives. So when it came to relationships, in my mind, I had to be a single mom and I had to do it better than my mother. And I had to do it better than my mother because my mother wasn't a very good parent. And I just felt like if I was going to be a parent, I'm definitely going to do better than her. I didn't even think about adding a man into the mix. I forgot all about the fact, remember I'm a child. I forget all about the fact that it does take two to even have a baby. <laughs> but ultimately this was my thought, but I'm going to tell you how these things manifest when you do not fix what you are thinking or what you have thought. Remember, I have that series about the, um, how to heal the past pain, hurt, and trauma, how to, you know, forgive, release, and let it go. Woo-wee! Because I attracted being a single mom into my life because that's what I believed as a kid, and I never corrected that. So even when I was with my son's dad, we never married, and he didn't, he kind of wanted to get married, didn't want to get married, and I didn't want to get married at all. So I was fine with it. I was like, we don't have to get married. I mean, who needs a label? That's kind of how I looked at it. I just looked at it as if it was a label and not a commitment. And I just had different what, thoughts. And mind you, I'm in my thirties at this point. I'm in, in my early thirties, but this concept originated when I was a kid. Do you understand? So while we're together, we, we never marry. But then when I say, when we split, when we stopped living together and I took my son and I, um, me, it was just me and him at the, around the age of two or three years old, <laughs> I felt really good about it. I felt very successful and it's not good because I believe that our children need both mother and father. And of course, because um, we do not live in the same household, it makes things a lot more difficult for us. But we do have a good co-parenting relationship because I finally matured and realized that you cannot do this alone. And having a physical child in my life made me realize how much the child needs both parents. So you can't look at things like you're going to do them all alone. So I've grown and come a long way and we have a pretty decent co-parenting relationship. Thank God. And, um, but I worked at having that relationship. I also worked at hurting that relationship. I'm going to say in the beginning of our split, but 
I realized as time went on that my son needed him and I would cry out to his father and not literally crying, but just, I guess, bugging, emailing, calling, texting and letting him know his son needs him. And when are you going to be around? He needs you. He needs you. He needs you. So fast forward to today, he actually lives with his father. He is actually present daily in his life. And that's awesome. Now, I don't get to see my son every day like I want to, but I get to see him every weekend. And it is the summertime right now. So during the summer, he's with me every day. So it's really nice. Um, and actually, it's a little bit freeing for me because I get to kind of concentrate on myself and and what kind of relationship that I really do want. Because I do want a relationship. I would like to be married. But being a single mom and in that mode, I didn't give myself the space to really date quality individuals who I felt like, you know, could really be a part of my life because I felt like I couldn't give them the quality because my whole goal and focus was on my son. And is he okay? What am I doing with him? It, it was all about him. So I didn't feel like I had it to give in a relationship that deserved it. So I did these part-time kind of relationship things and they didn't work out either. So I don't know what I was thinking, but now I know better. So I'll do better. But that's what I mean when you look at success. What does success look like in your life? And remember, review these things that you thought when you were a kid and dispel them and re-say them in a manner in which you know is fit for you today. Because <laughs> words do manifest. And I meant that with everything in my heart and my soul and my spirit that I wanted to be a single parent. You understand? I meant that. Um, now, the other things as far as my natural success, I have grown and I have developed. And I understand that, yes, you can be successful if that's your route through the educational world. Or you can ri rise up ranks through the corporate world. Or you can be your own uh, business. You can have your own business. You can be an entrepreneur. You can also do very, very well in network marketing. And a lot of people, you know, they put their heart and soul into it and they actually rise to the ranks of the top people in those companies. I know I've been into a few companies and, um, I love network marketing and I love the concept of what it means and what you can do and how you can help a lot of people with it. I hope I have not, um, gone too far off the beaten path, but I just want you to remember to think about what success means. And so I've changed my paradigm on success that I had from when I was a child till now. I desire a husband. For many, many years, you could you could ask my friends if I desired a husband, I would tell them, they would say, no, Dawn doesn't want to be married, but I do. I don't know what I, you know, why I was projecting that, but I think I projected it because of past pain, hurt, and drama, because of my parents not being together and my dad not being there. Mind you, my dad is a great guy. I love my dad. I actually live in Houston, Texas with where he is, and we have a great relationship, but growing up, seeing him and my mother not be together had a major impact on what I thought marriage was and what it would look like and how it could hurt kids. Um, so think about the different paradigms you have in your life for the different types of success, the different areas. Now for me, religious success is no longer being raptured by Jesus Christ and going to heaven. I currently believe that I'm living heaven now here on earth in the present. This is where my heaven is. I have no idea what's going to happen when this body passes away. I don't know. The catch is this. I'm okay with not knowing. I'm okay with living the life that I choose now. I still have love in my heart for God and Jesus because that was my base belief. You know, I talk about base belief a lot. I I'm a firm believer in your base belief is the, the belief system that you're going to catapult from to live that best life. So I don't say throw it all away. I haven't thrown Jesus and God all away. Every time I go on vacation, I take a Bible with me. <laughs> I'm not saying I read it, but it's a sense of security while I'm out of the United States of America. So I had my little Bible with me in my backpack. I never took it out, but it's, it's a security blanket for me. I may not read it like I did previously, but it's still a security blanket. Do you understand? So you can hold on to some of those base beliefs as long as they continue to serve you. But what I am saying along with that, where do you need to go? What What is your religious goals now? I think we all have your or your spiritual goals, if you want to say it that way. But we all have these goals and these thoughts about what we think we should do spiritually. Are we pursuing that? Because I'm going to tell you a well-rounded individual is successful in all areas. You're not just successful in one area of your life, but you're successful in all areas. And you're successful in all areas because you put the work in to be successful. You put the work in to make sure that you get healed and whole enough that you can live that life that you've been desiring to live. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm telling you, this journey for me has been so awesome. And I hope that I have shed a little bit of light on the beginning of our success series. We're going to dig a little bit deeper on different topics about success. I just wanted to give you some foundation for you to go away and think about. What does success mean to me? Write that down. What am I doing on a daily basis or what can I do on a daily basis? Small incremental things, incremental steps can I do on a daily basis that are going to get me to that success goal? Those small wins every day. Thank you for hanging out with me today, dreamers. You know, I always enjoy hanging out with my dreamers. Have a great day, dreamers. Dreamers.